friends and family, we're continuing to talk about Ernest from Earth. This is our segment on the Chapter 6 Curriculum Guide. Our social-emotional learning focus for this chapter is self-awareness, social awareness, and relationship skills. Kind of hitting a little bit of all three of those areas. We'll go through the questions on the curriculum guide. First, a DOK level one. When I talk about DOK, if anyone is actually looking at the curriculum guide, you kind of mark out the DOK levels next to the questions. That's called depth of knowledge. And if you're not aware of that terminology in an educational setting, basically a DOK one, a depth of knowledge level one, is the basic recall information. Can you recall the names of the characters in the story, the specific events that happened, and that goes up to a DOK4, which is more in-depth taking concepts and applying them in new and unique ways. So this is, we try to hit kind of across the whole board. So if you're looking at the curriculum guide, you'll see those depth of knowledge levels indicated. And then I also indicate the literacy standard that's sort of being addressed by the different questions. And those literacy standards are based on the National Common Core literacy standards, which I know not all states have adopted, but many have or many use something similar. So it could be pretty easily translated to a different state or school district set of standards. But starting off, what is Ernest's new acquaintance's name? That is Dat Sparrow. That is the red-skinned young man from Targ, who we have met, who does become Ernest's friend and confidant. And just a little insight, kind of peek behind the curtain as we do during these discussions. The name Sparrow that I selected, I so I spelt it, S-P-A-E-R-O, Sparrow, and I think I mentioned before, picking names is always sort of a difficult thing for me. I think sometimes I try to give it too much thought, but I'm always trying to like, what do I want the name to be? So like I picked Ernest's name because I wanted him to be sort of this earnest character, spelt differently, but a kid who just sort of represented, especially early in the book, sort of an honesty and an innocence. And Dat Sparrow, Dat was, oh, I came up, I just kind of liked the name Dat. I wanted something short. And Sparrow, I spent some time thinking about because Dat and his family are central to the book and they really become Ernest's surrogate family. And a lot of the book is about hope. At least I hope it translates this way, that the, the book is hopeful despite some of the social issues it gets into. And I was looking at, not to be sort of too, I don't know, not to be too intellectual about it or whatever, but I was thinking of like, well, is there is there another word for hope, something like that? And there's the Latin Spero, which is S-P-E-R-O, which kind of translates to hope or I hope. And I thought, well, that's, that's just a nice sounding name. I like that. So that Sparrow became the character's name. How is Ernest able to communicate with his new friend? The Universal Translator. This chapter, for me, is really... Kind of a transition chapter, kind of a setup chapter where I wanted to, I wanted to in one chapter kind of get past some of the complications that would be involved if you have a character landing on a new world, looking a different way, speaking in a different language. I didn't want that to be the focus of the story. I like when books, when movies don't spend a whole lot of time explaining every little thing, I think it's good to address some issues so then people aren't 
thinking the whole time, well, well, how does, how are Ernest and Dad going to communicate? It wouldn't make sense that this kid on this different planet would also speak English or whatever. So I wanted to get past those barriers very quickly. So I just came up with this universal translator sort of thing. It's something that we've seen in science fiction books, stories, movies before, where there's something that allows the translation. And I really, I spent zero time explaining any science or trying to put any science into it other than there's an earpiece that Ernest puts in that allows him to get a real-time translation of whatever Dat is saying or the other people on Targ. And then... Just because when I'm writing, I picture these things as sort of scenes in movies. I, In my head, I have sort of how the lighting is and how they're standing. I have a, a clear image of this. And I want to leave enough room for other people to create their own images. But in my, just in my head, for me writing, I didn't want it to seem like a bad dubbing of a movie where Ernest would be saying something and his mouth wouldn't match the language, wouldn't match the words coming out of it. So I just came up with this. It's the sticker he would put on. The technology would be advanced enough where it's going to essentially pick up his thoughts and it will actually manipulate his mouth to match the words so he can say in that native tongue whatever he wants to say. So that to me was this real quick, this is not the point of the story. I'm basically just saying, look, there's a thing that allows him to speak in this language and allows him to understand the language moving on. So that's... That's the Universal Translator, pretty generic name as well. The third question, how do they start to disguise Ernest? Otis, the computer, the artificial intelligence that is helping Ernest, now is kind of in this little wristband that Ernest have on, has on, and he says that they can do a holographic projection that would map directly onto his skin and make his skin red. That actually came from, originally, when I started writing it, they were going to cover Ernest up in makeup, basically. I had a scene written where they get back to Dad's house, and he gets into his mother's like makeup foundation kit, and they cover Ernest's face and hands, and then make sure he's got long sleeves and all this stuff on, and not to ruin anything for those of you who may be going through this for the first time, but there is, there's a scene later where it sort of comes up, where his disguise is compromised. And that was the original thought. It was going to have to deal with this makeup. But then as I thought about that, it's like, oh, that becomes a whole nother obstacle to be constantly dealing with. Like if Ernest touches something it's going to leave this red residue on and i feel like it's going to be pretty easy for people to if this were a real situation you'd be able to notice that it didn't look quite right him having this makeup all over his hands and stuff you wouldn't have the shading and stuff that you would in your skin normally so i actually reference that in this chapter, that sort of maybe suggests, like, well, I guess we could do that. And then I undercut it by Otis coming in saying, like, no, that would not work very well. So th that was really me having a conversation with myself of, like, well, that's, that's not a very good thing. And again, I don't want that to be the focus of the story, is these two trying to pull off the disguise. That's, that's not the theme that I'm really focused on. So I again come up with this very, hey, we've got this technology. It can project this thing. Your skin will look the same and feel the same. It'll just be red now. So that's how I got around that. The next kind of part of 
That question three is, why do you think they disguise Ernest? Answers could certainly vary, but I think the, the simplest thing is that it's probably safer for Ernest. He doesn't know everything about how people look and about the culture of the world he's on now, but clearly Dat has this red skin. Ernest has this light brown skin complexion and it, clearly they do not they look very similar otherwise but there is this skin tone difference which that's something that is a central theme of the book and it may be this idea of like okay for some reason it seems that it will be safer it will be easier for Ernest it, at least it's becoming clear that apparently no one has his type of skin tone on this world. So they decide to disguise Ernest. The next question is, should they disguise Ernest? Is this a good thing? And that gets into a higher depth of knowledge level question about, we could have a discussion about whether or not it's good for us to try to blend in, if that's something that we should do, if we should try to, if we should pretend we're something that we're not. In this case, I would like to think that the boys are recognizing that at least for now, this is a safer thing for him to try to blend in. They don't know if they're going to be able to contact Ernest's family, if Ernest will be able to get home, how he'll be able to get home. So for now, this is a safety thing. But that's something that we get discussed in class as well is a lot of times we try to fit in with a group of people because it is safer. There is safety in numbers and we do that a lot. We do that a lot through our whole lives where, okay, I may be willing to adjust the way that I present myself to fit in with this group because because I desire that sense of belonging because there is a sense of, of safety there. And it becomes a problem in our lives when we're giving up parts of ourselves, when we're selling off parts of ourselves just for that sense of safety and we're not living as we truly are. And that does become a part of this story as well. But for this initial point, it's, it's trying to keep Ernest safe in this initial stage of the story. The next part of that question is how could being in disguise impact Ernest's point of view? Again, a lot of different things that could be discussed here. There are a lot of different things where Ernest might be experiencing things that he's never experienced before. This kind of goes back to, this is not a, a new thought, but I wanted empathy to be at the heart of this story. And it's it's been a theme that's been explored before, but what if you really could step into someone else's shoes? What if you could take on a different persona and live that way for a time and experience things from that perspective, whether it be step into a different race, a different gender, a different belief system, a different socioeconomic status, whatever it is, if you could step into that and experience things from that perspective. So a lot of different answers might deal with that, that Ernest is going to be living as someone else is actually stepping into stepping into I would say like a not necessarily a character I mean he's being himself but he's he's into this new situation and he's getting more deeply immersed in it than we typically can in real life the fourth question on the curriculum guide at the end of this chapter Ernest's new friend says something about having it easier if a person chose to be blue instead of red. What might this tell us about life on this planet? We have not met any blue-skinned characters yet, 
But this is kind of the one of the first clues that, okay, there appear to be red-skinned people because we've met Dat. He mentions having blue skin, so there appears to be blue-skinned characters as well, blue-skinned individuals. And he just alludes to, oh, if you were going to pick your skin color, you'd have a lot easier if your skin color was blue. And that's sort of our first indication of some of the racism, some of the social issues that we're going to be discussing in this story is that like, okay, well, apparently not everyone has the same skin color. And for whatever reason, at least from Dad's perspective, you might have an easier go at life if your skin color was blue. How might this comment in the central themes of the book? We've already, I've already, <laughs> I wasn't real coy, already set up some things, starting the story off with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the, the March on Washington address, kind of throwing in there that, hey, we're going to be dealing with racism and these ideas of hope, and now we're getting into the story, which I hope is a story of trying to empathize and see things from an outsider's perspective, trying to get a look at, okay, experiencing for the first time. Ernest is now immersed in this, and this is kind of the first indication of like, okay, there may be some separation between those with red skin and those with blue skin. Then the extended thinking for chapter six is in this chapter, Ernest is starting to disguise himself to look more like his new friend, discuss a time you felt out of place and tried to fit in. In what ways did you try to fit in? Is it good to fit in with others or not? Support your position. That tax on what we were already discussing a little bit, just that idea of this is something that we do. We find ways to disguise ourselves. We find ways to mask ourselves in little ways so that we can fit in with the group, so that we can feel accepted. And I always think it's important when we discuss these things in class, it's, it's okay to manage our behaviors. We may speak different, differently to a group of our close friends than we would to say our grandmother or we might talk differently to people our own age than we would to a child and, and that's okay some of those social adjustments are okay and appropriate but it does become a challenging thing when we start disguising the important the essential parts of who we are to try to impress others or to try to make connections or to try to fit in. And I think it is good for us to think about times that we have done that in our lives where it's like, oh, I, I maybe wasn't being the truest form of myself because I was, I was trying to be in with this group. And that's something worth examining. So sort of our extended thinking for this chapter. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll continue with these videos that wraps up our analysis of chapter six. Much love.